Today we are here on International Women's Day to declare once and for all that women's rights are human rights and human rights are women's rights. We walked out today for a day without women to send a clear message. We stand with our sisters across the country who have walked out in defense of equal rights for women. We also recognize that there are millions of women who are unable to walk out because they may get fired or cannot afford to lose their meager incomes. So we walked out for them too. We are raising our voices for the millions of women who can't. Today, women of the Congressional Black Caucus are wearing black flowers in resistance to President Trump's assault on our communities of color and women of color. It's an outrage that women of color continue to be at the bottom of the economic ladder in America. We work twice as hard for half the pay. We fight day in and day out to keep the government from restricting our reproductive rights. We are brutalized and demoralized by our criminal justice system. And despite the fact that women of color turned out in large numbers to vote than any other group, our civil, human, and women's rights remain under attack. They remain under attack. I don't know about you, my sisters. Yes, I do know about you. We walked out to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. And so we demand that women, including women of color, be paid a living wage, an equal wage for their hard work. We demand an end to discriminatory abortion restrictions that disproportionately affect low-income women and women of color. We reject Republican attempts to repeal, repeal the Affordable Care Act, which has provided life-saving health care to women of color across the country. And we are demanding once and for all that women of color receive equal justice under the law. Yes. Equal justice under the law. Finally, let me just say Shirley Chisholm, my mentor and the first African-American woman to be elected from Congress from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Yeah. Shirley used to say, if, you don't, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. <laughs> bring a folding chair. Well, we brought our folding chairs and we're here to say once and for all, we will not be moved. We will not be moved. So thank you for your courage. Thank you for resisting this anti-woman, un-American Trump agenda. It gives me great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Congresswoman Katherine Clark, who is a champion for civil and human rights, who helped lead the sit-in on the House floor to protest Republican inaction on common sense gun reforms. Thank you, Katherine. Thank you. It is wonderful to be with you. You are a beautiful sight. And thank you to Barbara Lee, whose leadership and organization, the things that she champions are the reason that we are here today. She is our Shiro, and we thank you, Barbara Lee. And today, we stand in solidarity with women across the globe who face the daily threat of violence and death simply because they are women. More girls have been killed in the last 50 years precisely because they were girls than men were killed in all the wars in the 20th century. One in three women across the world will experience physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. We are here today to fight to save the lives of women and girls at home and abroad we're here for the millions of women and children who are bought and sold as victims of human trafficking. For the 200 million women and girls alive today who've been subjected to genital mutilation. And the millions of women and girls across the world who are living with HIV and AIDS. We stand today in solidarity against this administration's draconian cuts to foreign aid, hurting the most vulnerable women in the world. 
We are here to fight an administration and a Republican Congress that targets our families and with backwards and divisive policies, like the administration's plan to cut funding for the Office of Violence Against Women, or the cruel and sickening proposal to rip immigrant children from their mothers at the border, and the anti-immigrant policies that force victims of domestic violence and sexual assault to hide in the shadows. We stand today with transgender women who are among the most at risk for violence, murder, unemployment, and poverty. We know the deadly connection between guns and domestic violence. Yet despite all the evidence, this Republican Congress refuses to even act on common sense background checks that would keep guns out of dangerous hands and save women's lives. <laughs> Nevertheless, despite this Trump administration and the Republicans' callous and cruel disregard for women, we will persist. We will persist and we will stand together. And I am so pleased to introduce my colleague and my friend from the state of Florida, Congresswoman Lois Frankel. and Catherine Clark. Today on International Women's Day, a day without women, we join the millions of women and men who love women in recognizing the important economic power. You're here, look at them. We have sons. We join the millions of women and men who love women in recognizing the important economic power of women in the United States and around the globe. Democratic women and men walked out of the Capitol together to show solidarity with our sisters who were staying away from normal duties and mainstream commerce to call attention to the inequities that women and gender nonconforming people continue to face. We we join those wearing red to signify love for our sisterhood and our passionate energy to pursue measures that will advance the lives of women and their families, such as equal pay, paid family leave, quality affordable childcare, access to full health care, and freedom from violence. In Congress, Democrats will resist efforts to take us back from hard-earned gains, like standing strong against the unrelenting attempts by Republicans to repeal the Affordable Care Act, defund Planned Parenthood, and block access to full reproductive care. In the words of the Women's March today, we raise our voices to say, women's rights are human rights, and when women succeed, the world succeeds. And now I'm pleased to bring uh, my co-chair of the Democratic Working Women Group, Brenda Lawrence from the great state of Michigan. Hello, everyone. Women, are you here? I want to say thank you to our amazing leader, Nancy Pelosi, to the leadership, leadership of these amazing women and the men who recognize women in leadership. I want to thank you all as well. As we today recognize and support International Women's Day, a day without a woman, equal rights, are something that we're fighting for now more than ever. 
as vice chair of the bipartisan women's congressional caucus and a member of the executive board of the congressional black caucus i believe that equality is always a goal that congress must prioritize a day without a woman yes a day without a woman is a day of great loss for America and the world. So let's talk about that. A day in America without a woman would be a day without primary soul earners of 40% of households with children under 10 years old. A day without a woman would be 47% of the nation's workforce. A day without a woman would be 80%, 80% of the healthcare workforce in America. A day without a woman would be close to 80% of the elementary and middle school educators in this country. And a day without a woman in the workforce Ladies and gentlemen and American citizens, 10 million businesses that are owned by women in this great country. Yeah. Now you would think our numbers would be enough to convince the need for equality for women in America, but we still have a long way to go. The unemployment rate for women in America is 4.8%. Women still underrepresented in the STEM occupations, and women only make up 4%, 4% of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And women only represent 5% of the skilled trade workforce, but we're here today because we're going to change those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. We must continue to work together to bring up those unemployment rates, to get women to sit at the table. And I know if you need to bring a folding chair, kick open the door, crawl under the opening, whatever you do, we're going to get to the table of those CEOs and those boards. I want you to know that we have said it. When a woman succeeds, America succeeds. Human rights are women's rights. And I will tell you, when a woman sits at the table, the conversation changes. And we, as women, need to change the conversation in America. And I'm so glad to stand here with you. I am proud to bring forth another powerful woman in our Congress. I'd like to bring forth Congresswoman Jepel. Please greet her. Hello, beautiful sisters in red. How are you doing? My name is Pramila Jayapal, and I'm... En 2014, a special district in the state of Washington, and so proud to be here with this incredible caucus under the leadership of Leader Pelosi, Catherine Clark, who brought us together, and all these amazing women who are here to fight for women across this country and across the world. I wanted to talk to you about women's reproductive rights and to talk about the fact that women's reproductive health is not only women's rights, but it is our economic future. The reality is that we need to be able to plan our families and make decisions about our own bodies without anybody else getting in the way. And the and the Trump administration and the Republicans in Congress have been waging a war on our health and our ability to make those decisions. Trump, in his very first few days, reinstated and expanded the global gag rule, which yanked away critical funds from organizations that provide aid across the world. And as somebody who is an immigrant from India and who has worked in public health around the world for eight years, I can tell you that those programs are life and death 
for people, for women, and their families around the world. Republicans also pushed through H.R. 7 in their attempt to codify the Hyde Amendment. And they're attempting, they are attempting to gut Title X funding. And of course, they want to defund Planned Parenthood, even though Planned Parenthood, that's right. And we are going to make sure the women across the country who get their services from Planned Parenthood are out in the streets and ready to fight to preserve those critical services across our country. <laughs> Sisters, we are not going to let them roll back progress on the gains we've made, are we? We are going to make sure that we continue to provide access to health care and make sure that people understand these are our reproductive organs. Take your hands off of them. They belong to us. And let us be clear that today we are here to demand the rights of all kinds, respect, equity, racial justice for women around the world. And we are clear, we are clear today, clearer than ever before, that it is always women who have led us forward, rising over and over again in the face of turmoil, Women who find the courage and the resilience to turn what is lost into what can be gained. So thank you, women and men who are supporting us, for making sure that we preserve the rights of all women in the United States and around the world. Thank you. And now it is my great honor to introduce my incredible colleague, champion for women's rights from the great state of Illinois, Sherry Bustos. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me hear from you if you think we need more women in Congress. 19% is not good enough. I am here to talk with you about equal pay for equal work. Anybody think we have a little work to do on that? Yeah. You know, we've made some good progress, but you got to go back 50 years and you think about what's happened in these 50 years. Half a century ago is when President John F. Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act. All right, 50 years have elapsed. The first bill that President Obama signed into law was the Lilly Ledbetter Equal Pay Act. So where do we stand today? Where do we stand today? Are we there yet? No. So on a national level, women make 80 cents on the dollar to what a man makes. And I've got worse news. In my congressional district, I represent the northwestern region of the state of Illinois. We make just 72 cents to the dollar. So a lot of work yet to do. For African-American women nationally, 63 cents. Latinas, it's 54 cents. So women, we've got to band together. We've got so much work yet to do. And we know that this isn't just a women's issue. This is a family issue. So let's stand together. It's why this congressional session, and until we get it done, we've got to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. And the women and the men behind you, we pledge to you that we will be supportive of that. Yes. And again, <laughs> I heard one yes. <laughs> All right, yes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> After all, in a country as great as ours, there's absolutely no reason that every woman here should not be making a dollar for every dollar a man earns. I want to thank all of you for coming out to be supportive of us today. What I'd like to do now is turn it over to a world champion of women's rights, Jackie Spear, a member of Congress from the state of California. Thank you. To our fearless leader, Nancy Pelosi, to all the women and men in red who are the leaders of our country on women, we say thank you for being here. You rock. In January, three million women, men, and children across this country in a sea of pink 
were there to tell the president that we refuse to be marginalized. Today on International Women's Day and a day without a woman, this pink tide is now turning red. Nevada is poised to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment, the first state in over 40 years. And let's remind ourselves that in our Constitution, it is still not a prohibition against discrimination based on sex, and we must change that. And all across the country, women are speaking out and walking out to tell the President and his Republican enablers in Congress that we will not go back. We will not go back to an idealized post-war America where women of color were denied the vote, where LGBT Americans were denied marital and parental rights, where women could not get bank credit without the permission of their husbands, where metal, marital rape and sexual harassment were not punishable crimes, and where women of all backgrounds died because they couldn't get life-saving health care. We will not go back to a time where simply being a woman was a pre-existing condition. And insurance companies were allowed to deny coverage or make us pay higher premiums than man. We will not go back to a time where hardworking single mothers like my constituent, Kalima, was forced to decide between her son's health and paying the rent. Today, we stand for real family values. And in solidarity with Kalima and, her, and every woman who fears the agenda of the President and Congressional Republicans, today we were read to say, we will not go back. And now, the woman who's going to take us forward, the leader of the Democrats in Congress, Please welcome Leader Nancy Pelosi. Good afternoon. It is afternoon, and it is a good one to be with all of you. Uh, we are in solidarity with women across the country, across the world, on International Women's Day. It's an honor to be here with my colleagues, with Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Catherine Clark, Brenda Lawrence, Lois Frankel, uh, the, well, the whole, li you heard all of them speak. I just want to acknowledge that Linda Sanchez, our vice chair of our caucus, is in the uh, Ways and Means room with a record number of women members of the Ways and Means Committee today fighting to save the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. And so we're going to hear from Congresswoman Barragan of California a champion on women is going to speak to us about women and immigration. Congresswoman Barragan. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. I am the daughter of immigrants from Mexico. My parents came here for a better life for their kids. Here I am in Congress now, the face of the very people this president is demeaning. Not just women, but immigrants. What's happening today at our borders is unreal. It's un-American. Just this week we heard this president is thinking of separating women and their children at the border to deter them from coming to this country. That's right, he should be ashamed of himself. I am proud to stand with my colleagues here today to stand up for women, to stand up for immigrants, to stand against this administration that thinks they can come in and tell women what to do and thinks they can come in and demean our immigrants. It's a very serious time. We need all of you out there and all of us up here to stand together to continue to move forward for women. Latinas only make 54 cents on the dollar. That is unacceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we need to stand together at this time with women. Immigration rights are women's rights. Yeah. 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 Thank you for giving me a moment to address you. And now I'll bring up our great leader, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Hello again. As I again say how proud it is to be with my colleagues on the steps of the Capitol and in solidarity with our members who are inside on the Energy and Commerce Committee, on the Education and Labor Committee, on the Ways and Means Committee, fighting to protect the Affordable Care Act what, because we believe that health care is a right for all Americans, not a privilege for just a few. They send you their regards as well, as well as our colleagues on the steps. And I also want to salute the members of the congressional staff who have joined us here today and for the, all the work that they do. Let's hear it for the staff of the congressional. To all of you who have joined us and to everyone across our country and across the world, it's an honor to join you for a day without a woman, how appropriate that it is Women's International Day as well. And since it's Women's International Day, I want to just tell you that from time to time, in my capacity as speaker and then leader, people will say to me, if you were in control of everything in the world, if you ruled the world, what one thing would you do to make the future better? That's an easy answer. The education of girls. Yeah. 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 The education of girls so that they can succeed, that they can provide for their families, uh, the respect that it commands for them uh, to respect their intellect and their decisions about the size and timing of their families. So much goes into the word of respect, education, family planning, and the rest. So here we are today. This is a day that is very interesting because we are observing the, 100, the, the 100th anniversary of the first woman elected to Congress. Jeanette Rankin of Montana. It's pretty exciting. Women in America did not have the right to vote yet. In Montana they did, and they sent a woman to Congress. And she made a difference here. And she said at the time, I may be the first woman in Congress, but I know one thing for sure, I will not be the last. <laughs> and she certainly has not been, but we want more. Nothing is more, nothing is more wholesome to the political process or the governance of our country than the fuller participation and leadership of women. So I've said to the women, okay, you can applaud that. <laughs> I said to the women in the march, and aren't we proud of the march and all that it engendered throughout the world, I said to the women, you have marched for progress, now you must run for office. <laughs> so as we try to protect a woman's right to choose or the education of women, the fuller participation in not only politics and government, but in every aspect, every aspect of the life of a country and a society, we know one thing for sure, that when women succeed, America succeeds. And when women succeed, as my colleague said, the world succeeds. We can do that again. When women succeed, the world succeeds. So here we are, a day without a woman. Just imagine what that would be if we could take it to its fullest extent. We never want to find that out because women's contribution is so valuable. I'm so proud of the presentations our members have made. And Congresswoman Barragon is a freshman member of Congress. She's been a member for about two months. <laughs> I just want to also acknowledge the work of our colleague Frederica Wilson. Every Wednesday, she, we dress in red. We stay on the steps or inside, depending on the rain. Uh, to remember our girls, to bring back our girls. Uh, she observes uh, International Women's Day every day, and so do we. And I want to acknowledge her leadership in that regard. I know my colleagues do as well. So we don't want the world to know a day without a woman, but we want people to understand what that day would be like. 
and it would not be a day that takes us to our fullest aspirations for the future, for our children, uh, for the future that we envision for them. So I'm proud to stand with my colleagues, with the staff of the Congress, with all of our friends out there, with people across America who are making a very strong statement. And I return to where I began with this. If I ruled the world, the one thing we would do to make the future better would be the education of girls, not just here in America, but across, across the world. Because when women succeed, the world succeeds. Thank you all very much for coming.